there has been a very very great disaster on my farm it has been raining for uh, approximately four months kutoka september since september it has been raining heavily and the farm has really been affected negatively especially the strawberries currently we are not harvesting like we were expecting so today i wanted us to focus on uh, strawberry diseases fungal infections specifically because that is something that can uh, demotivate a farmer both young and uh, experienced farmers from you know engaging in a uh, strawberry cultivation now focus on the fungal infections uh, each uh, at a time so that we can be able to understand how they develop and how they affect our strawberries so guys there are so many strawberry diseases affecting the the there's so many fungal infections affecting strawberries whenever and be uh, present in our farms even before we plant our strawberries and that is why it is advisable for us to conduct a soil testing whenever we are planting our strawberries actually before we plant our strawberries so that we can be able to prevent some of these diseases so one of the diseases that affect strawberries is called anthracnose or collectricum and these diseases this disease affect the roots the leaves the plant uh, stems and the runner so with a trunk nose you will find that your plant will start by developing some leaf spots when the leaf spots develop further the disease will affect the stolon part and then you will find that your stolons have a brownish color which also continues and discolors the uh, crown part when you break the crown into two you will find that the, the crown has uh, some reddish brown coloring uh, on the surface of the crown and this diseases progresses from uh, making the f the flower the plant to wilt because whenever you will find that uh you will find that you're watering your plants but whenever you are after watering the plants is not actually becoming green especially when there is even a little amount of sunshine so the plants becomes uh starts to wilt after wilting the plants will eventually die because now advanced the fruits that are about to ripen you will find that they become soft like soft like and they were they they also developed some water soaked and after some time if you don't remove that uh plant or that fruit in that stage the place that the anthracnose bacteria has affected it will become uh darkish brown and then the place will dry and eventually your plant will uh die anthracnose is a very negative can affect your farm negatively because if you do not dispose these affected plants properly you're going to find that even if you renew your crops uh, the disease will also affect the plants at some stage because anthracnose lives in the soil uh, for approximately nine months so you can imagine a whole year you're here you're finding your crops are affected by the anthracnose uh, fungal infection you remove the affected plants and then you dispose them just there you just uh, you say ah this is manure let me just leave it here so that it can decompose and then help uh, with crop nutrients in the next season so you will find that you're not killing the disease and after a few months you will find that the plants are, uh, aff are affected again so the best way to uh, to avoid a uh, fungal infection it is to ensure that you dispose your plant your affected crops uh whenever you remove them dig a hole a deep hole whereby the plant is going to stay uh, in the ground uh, for approximately more than nine months so that you can ensure you are removing the crops or the infection from your farm completely so the other infection that affects strawberries are called the gray mold or botrytis uh, with it, it affects mostly the fruits itself so you will find that whenever you are about to harvest your strawberries uh, the the gray mold will have a whitish thing on the top of the strawberries and the strawberries will become uh, overly soft good for harvesting so the moment that you find that your strawberry fruits have a whitish a whitish color on top of them and so you will find your plants looking like this and you will also find the plants have a you know a whitish grayish color which will uh, affect a part of your strawberries and if you do not remove the strawberries they will develop further into this if you remove the materials that have been affected you also ensure that you are planted 
uh, a distance at a distance a higher level from the soil because whenever water becomes uh, comes into contact with the strawberries and then they mix with the soil this is when these fungal infections get a proper area to you know propagate and uh, to develop to grow so you have to ensure that your strawberries are planted at a higher level and you have to use uh, materials like the mulching grass mulching paper and also you plant them whenever you're planting in your containers ensure that the fruits are hanging outside the soil so that you do not uh, encourage growth by letting the plants come into contact with soil and water so besides the anthracnose the botrytis and also the yeah besides anthracnose and botrytis you can also find leaf spots in your strawberries. Majority of these leaf, leaf spots, you can find that they are affected by spider mites. But also the fungal infections can also uh, cause the leaf spots to develop. And you will find that your strawberries will start developing with uh, some spots, some red, reddish, brownish spots, which have some grayish uh, color on at the center. And then the leaves will start to develop, the disease will develop further into a... Uh, uh, brownish color making the leaf uh, to dry eventually so guys you have to be uh, very careful whenever you are sp you are spraying or you are irrigating your crops your strawberries uh, the best way to irrigate your strawberries is through the drip irrigation system that is where you can be able to control the amount of water getting into the plant by ensuring that water is watered at the base or at the root system so apart from the leaf spots, there's another one called the Formopsis leaf blight. And with this disease, you will find that the, the leaves have, uh, you know, when the, where, where the leaf spots have the small round uh, spots, dark brown or reddish or purplish spots, you will find that with the Formopsis, they are, the, the, the darkening or the browning is quite huge. Uh, or it is larger than the leaf spots and you will find it is affecting at the edge of the crop the the strawberry leaves and uh, at the center yani it has uh, several spots that are quite bigger than the leaf spots so with it with this disease is also affected by the water when the plants come into contact with water and the control method is to just avoid the plants from getting irrigated uh, splashing the water on the leaves bacteria are encouraged to grow whenever the water comes into contact with the leaves and the soil so to ensure that you avoid these diseases especially during the rain season ensure that your plants are properly irrigated by using a drip irrigation system the second thing that we can do we can avoid uh, because sometimes whenever it is raining surely we cannot be able to avoid the rains from falling into our plants uh, but we can use a greenhouse or irrigating paper a greenhouse paper we just cover the top of our plants so that we can ensure that the plants are not uh, you know the rains do not affect the crops uh, too much and we can avoid these uh, fungal infections we can also avoid these fungal infections by ensuring that we fumigate our soils uh, before we plant our strawberries because like I told you this these uh, fungal infections can last in your strawberries for more than uh, nine months so if you had planted a straw or a crop that had the same infection and then you come and plant a strawberry that is healthy eventually these diseases will come into contact with the crop and you're going to suffer from the infections so the best way you to fumigate your cr your soil or you solarize your soil. By solarizing, I mean you put the materials that can be able to heat up the soil. We shall be discuss the process in a later video. But you can put the materials that are going to, you know, to, to heat up the soil and, you know, burn the materials that encourage fungal infection from growing. Apart from that, you can ensure that you are weeding your crops properly, regularly, pruning the old leaves. By the way, the old leaves are the ones that encourage uh, too much fungal infection. So when your strawberries are young, you will find that these infections are not affecting your strawberries. And because strawberries are like kales, they keep growing new uh, leaves 
every month every month you will find their new leaves ensure that you prune your strawberries so that you can remove the old leaves that are highly affected by the diseases so that you can avoid the infection from affecting your crops and with that you will have uh, overcome the disease and the infection so that is what is affecting my strawberries currently we are not actually harvesting because of this our production has decreased so much and it is very really discouraging but that should not be the case that should you know prevent us from growing strawberries we can overcome it we can overcome this by applying fungicides uh currently i do not have a fungicides that i can rec recommend because most of the ones in the market are chemically made fungicides and i am doing organic strawberry farming so i have not really come across a good uh fungicide so anybody who knows of a good fungicide can actually recommend one to me uh however i have a uh, a solution that i am making and i am trying on my farm and i will be sharing with you guys whenever uh if the solution will be working in controlling the fungicides so guys in our next video we shall be talking about the pests because if we combine it with this the video it is going to be too long uh, so we are going to talk about pests in the next uh, video.